Greetings and welcome to our presentation about using photonics to determine the wavelength of red light. We hope you are enjoying the Minty SIG conference this year. The agenda for this presentation includes our presenter introductions, the objectives of this demonstration, some theory and concepts to help you understand what we are doing, a description and some pictures of lab equipment and how it is set up, the procedure as well as measurements, calculations, and a comparison of the lab results to the actual wavelength. My name is Greg Kepner and I am currently serving as the co-PI of the Micro Nano Technology Education Center housed at Pasadena City College. Now I would like to introduce you to my colleague and subject matter expert, Professor Frank Reed. Hello everybody, I am the principal investigator of the Developing Photonics Education in Iowa's Rural Secondary Schools at Indian Hills Community College in Ottumwa, Iowa. So now we'll begin. The objectives, there's two of them. Determine the wavelength, called lambda, of red light by analyzing the pattern generated by a diffraction grating. Objective two, we're gonna compare the measured wavelength, lambda m, results to the given wavelength, lambda g, to prove the accuracy of this method, and I think you will be amazed. Diffraction. What is diffraction? I want a beam of light or other system of waves, water waves, sound waves, take your pick, is spread out as a result of passing through a narrow aperture or across an edge, typically accompanied by interference between the waveforms produced. This is kind of a lengthy slide. I'll try not to read all of it. Uh, transmission grating, light passes through the grating. It's an aperture or a hole, if you will, which consists of a multitude of equally spaced parallel slits. We'll have a diagram here to show that to you. The one in this lab has a thousand slits or lines per millimeter. Think about that for a minute. Monochromatic or one color light passing through the grating will then produce an interference pattern. The pattern will be formed with a bright mode fringe at the center and ser several other less bright mode fringes on each side. The wavelength of light can then be determined from this diffraction pattern. The width of the single slit is given by B in the diagrams we're going to show you, and the distance between the slit's centers are given by A. To find the value of A, represented by D in the wavelength equation, you'll see that later too, we're going to divide 1 by the number of slits, which is 1,000, and for clarity, only a few of the thousands of slits are present in our grating are shown. Note that the spreading of the light occurs always in a direction perpendicular to the direction of the long edge of the slit. So in this case, when you see it, the long edge is uh, vertical, and therefore the grating uh, interference pattern will be horizontal. The term lines, grooves, or slits are used interchangeably. This is our first figure showing the interference pattern through a diffraction grating. These are the, each one of these circles represents what we talked about before. A is the center to center uh, separation. B is the slit width. And um, the zero uh, orders are on the right around the large one. And of course the slits are vertical and interference pattern is horizontal. This is another figure showing basically the same thing. S1 and S2 are the two slits, but now we have uh, constructive, destructive, and so forth interference patterns, bright, dark, bright, dark, and you will see this in the results of our uh, lab. What you see here is the same thing, again, only showing the bright and dim areas caused by the interference. This is a pictorial of the MPEC photonics kit that we will be using in this demonstration session. This kit was developed through the ATE Midwest Photonics Education Center. It can be used to perform 29 different laboratory activities. This kit includes a lab instruction booklet along with a variety of photonics components all in a portable carrying case. These kits are available for purchase by contacting my colleague Frank Reed at frank.read at indianhills.edu. 
The first thing we need to do is to read through the entire procedure and then identify and select all of the equipment and components needed to perform this laboratory activity. The picture shows everything that is needed to get started. Professor Reed will now share an overview of the procedure. The procedure for determining the wavelength of red light. Very important to make sure you do good measurements. Turn on the laser, of course, to produce a diffraction pattern after it's lined up to that slit and have a white beam block for the target, just a piece of paper. The pattern will consist of a center spot, M sub zero, with a spot on either side of the center spot, which is a plus one or a negative one. There are additional spots beyond the range of the paper. You will mark the paper at the midpoint of the spots M1 and M-1 on both sides of the center spot, N sub zero. Measure and record the distance from M-1 to M-1 and divide by two for finding X average. As you can see there, we are yet to determine what those are. And then we measure and record the distance L from the diffraction grating to the white beam block target paper. This picture shows the laboratory setup, including the laser, diffraction grating, and the white beam block target, which in this case is a white 3x5 note card. The card serves as a target for the laser light while blocking the light from passing. From this point on, it will be simply referred to as the target. It also serves as an easy way to mark the location of the spots where the modes M plus 1, M0, and M minus 1 contact the target. Note that the diffraction grating has 1,000 lines per millimeter, which is 0 0.001 of a millimeter, or 1 micron spacing. In this picture, the red arrows indicate the path of red monochromatic laser light as it travels from the laser through the diffraction grating on its way to the target. The modes M-1, M-0, and M-1 are the points of contact of the laser light on the target. In this view from above, the target and diffraction grating are shown. It's important to note that the target and diffraction grating should be parallel to one another, and the laser should be perpendicular to both of them. The laser, not shown, is to the right of the diffraction grating in this case. In this picture, the red lines show the path of laser light from the laser through the diffraction grating and to the target. For perspective, the modes are also shown for M plus 1, M0, and M negative 1. When viewed from above, notice how two right triangles are formed by the laser light paths and the plane of the target. The triangles should be equal if the laser light is perpendicular to the target. Using either one of the triangles, the angle theta must be calculated. The angle theta can be calculated using the trigonometric formula theta equal arc tangent of x over l or the inverse tangent of x over l. Now Professor Reed will describe the lab procedure and the process for finding the values for x, l, angle theta, and ultimately the wavelength of the red laser light. As you can see in this slide, we have the m negative 1, m0, an M plus one shown with the laser beam spots. What we need to do now is we need to mark the center of each one of those to the best of our ability with some sort of a marking pen, like a felt pen. A very small felt pen is the best thing to do and get dead center the best you can. As you can see by our picture, the distance from M negative one to M plus one is 126 millimeters. To find x, which is considered the distance from the mode 0 to the mode 1 or negative 1, we're going to divide that total distance by 2. Therefore, it comes out to be x average, in this case, of 63.0 millimeters. We need to have the value L, so that's the distance from the diffraction grating to the target. Measure this very carefully, we come up with 75.0 millimeters for L. Remember when we read the procedure before and talked about what we needed to do? So we needed to turn on the laser to, to produce a diffraction pattern on the block. We did that. We needed to mark the midpoint of the two spots on both sides of the center spot, and we did that. And then we measured and recorded distances, and we found that the one distance was 126 millimeters. 
to find out that our X of average would be 63 millimeters. We also measured L because all of these uh, quantities are in our equation, L to be 75 millimeters. So our equation, theta equals inverse tangent of X divided by L. X is a distance from the center fringe to the first bright fringe. We found out that that, that distance to be 63 millimeters. The L distance from the diffraction gradient to the plane of, or the target was 75 millimeters. Now we need to find theta or the angle between a beam traveling straight through and or perpendicular to the line and from the center of the beam at the grating to the first bright fringe. We had that in one of those pictures. So then we to find lambda, we have lambda equals D sine of theta. In this case, uh, lambda is a Greek letter or for wavelength of incident light and D is the distance between the slits on the diffraction grating. So here are our calculations to determine the angle theta from the equation. As you can see there showing uh, the actual uh, calculating, we have a theta of 40.0 degrees. And then we know that the wavelength can be determined using the next equation, lambda equals d sine of theta. We know that degrading is a thousand lines per millimeter. So as Greg said earlier, the line spacing is one divided by 1,000 millimeters per line. This ends up to give us a wavelength, lambda equals 0 0.0006,000, 64,279 millimeters. You round it up, you make it into nanometers, because that's what we do in this business. So lambda equals 643 nanometers, round it up. This is going to show you how this method, although being sort of manual, is pretty good, really. So the comparison is the given minus the measured. The given times 100 equals the percent difference. So the given, which is in the manual for the laser, is 650 nanometers. Our measured one was 643 nanometers. And then we're going to divide that by the given and multiply it by 100 to get a percent difference, and we come up with 1.1% rounded difference. That's really close. That's very acceptable given the manual measurement methods used. That concludes our demonstration session of how to determine the wavelength of red light using photonics. We hope that you've learned something about photonics and please feel free to contact either of us at the email addresses listed on this slide. Thank you for attending.